Hi learners, I am Dr. Prabhat Devedi, Associate Professor at Step HBTI, Kanpur, India. Today, I am going to uh, discuss concepts of hypothesis. Uh, in fact, uh, hypothesis is beginning of any research. What happens uh, in the beginning, researcher uh, has a problem or a question in his mind or her mind. Uh, for that only he or she uh, decides to go for you know, um, research. So what happens when, when he tries to seek answers to, uh, to the, those questions uh, and he couldn't or she couldn't find those answers, then he or she decides to go for research. And, and then what happens, the problem or question is further you know, uh, resolved in the form of hypothesis, which is in fact in the beginning logical hypothesis or you know, theoretical hypothesis, which is further uh, resolved into uh, statistical hypothesis if the need be. And that hypothesis or those, uh, uh, that hypothesis is tested uh, with uh, some statistical tests uh, that is known as experiments which result into you know some findings which um, are you know uh, generalized onto the population or uh, which is supposed to be the answer of the question or uh, of the query. So that's how you know um, this is believed that hypothesis is you know starting point of any systematic inquiry or any scientific inquiry um, uh, of new knowledge or new observation. So this is such an important thing. Now uh, where in hypothesis comes into the picture, um, how hypothesis is required, um, why hypothesis is required, there are questions uh, which need to be answered. What happens? Uh, in the process of statistical inferencing, what a researcher does, he or she actually takes out a sample from the population. And then uh, the researcher collects the data uh, based on that sample, and then the data is you know, organized, edited, coded, and then finally, you know, um, Put into the uh, put on the test and uh, brings uh, out some results out of it, and then those results, which are known as statistics, something like that, they are further you know compared with the parameter of the population. As we have already understood that there, um, what is statistics, what is parameter, what is sample, what is population. So, uh, though we need not to uh, go through these terms and terminologies again and again, however, uh, I have put this, these terms in the next uh, or forthcoming slide. So, uh, that is how things happen. So, just, you know, inferring the result, inferring, you know, some conclusion or, or taking out inferences from sample data for the population uh, is known as, you know, statistical inferencing. So it is in fact the process through which inferences about a population are made based on certain statistics calculated from the data of a sample drawn from the same population. And there are two ways uh, through which statistical inferencing is done. One is known as hypothesis testing, whereas another one is known as estimation and hypothesis testing what we do it is in fact a statistical method of testing the assumption as hypothesis is an assumption which we will uh, be dealing with in detail in next slides so it is in fact an assumption and assumption which is tested through a, a scientific method that is known as you know hypothesis testing Another one is estimation, which is, you know, uh, actually uh, sample statist statistics uh, to be compared with the population parameters. And, 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 and um, when uh, these, this sample statistic is compared with the population parameter, 
uh, this is after some some uh, scientific work actually in the beginning what we do we uh, we assume population parameter to be uh, a point or to lie in the range of two values so there are two types of estimation one is known as point estimation another one is known as interval estimation so in point estimation you know we assume population parameter to be a single point single value whereas in interval estimation we assume that population parameter should be lying between these two values that is how you know um, um, statistical inferencing is done but in both the cases whether hypothesis testing or estimation in both the cases the assumptions are tested and then finally uh, based on the results of those tests you know uh, statistics are generalized onto the population parameter that's how you know statistical inferencing uh, goes now the terms which will be useful throughout these slides uh before you know going through all these slides we must know uh, that's why these terms has been put over here population means all possible values that we have known in the earlier lectures sample is portion of that population parameter you know um, is characteristic of population uh, such as you know mean which is denoted by mu standard deviation which is denoted by sigma so population characteristics uh, may be called are called parameter where in uh, mean is denoted by mu and standard deviation is denoted by sigma now uh, in statistics uh, uh, what happens uh, it is basically uh, characteristics of the sample so statistics are drawn from the sample uh, data so the mean of a statistic uh, so mean of sample is uh, called x bar whereas standard deviation of sample is called small s now uh, two more things which we must know independent variable and dependent variable independent variable is something a researcher makes changes in that so as to major changes in dependent variable so independent variable is rightly said that something which researcher controls which is independent and and uh, based on the changes in independent variable uh, what result we want to what difference or what impact or what effect we want to measure on to other variable that is known as dependent variable so dependent variable is something uh, that researcher observes or measures based on the independent variable now let's understand what is hypothesis hypothesis is a premise or a claim that we want to test it is a specific testable prediction what happens a researcher has a question in mind which is further resolved into hypothesis as i told you earlier so it is it can be called that you know hypothesis is a question or research question is a kind of hypothesis for that research so it is premise or a claim that a researcher wants to test it should be specific it should be testable so it is a specific and testable prediction it should be clearly stated it should be very specific and it should be testable like smoking causes cancer it is very smoke uh, very specific one smoking causes cancer is smoking independent variable cancer dependent variable researcher wants to test whether there is any relationship between smoking and cancer or more smoking is related to the more possibility of cancer so this is what the directional hypothesis i am talking about until and unless we talk about the relationship is there any relationship between smoking and cancer that's you know non, non directional hypothesis if i i make a null hypothesis like 
there is no effect of you know smoking on cancer and alternative hypothesis is smoking positively affect cancer then this is a directional hypothesis so i will be talking about directional hypothesis later on but here it is specific it is testable we can very well test this hypothesis like we can take out some uh, people who uh, are suffering from you know some patients who are suffering from cancer we can now test them we can ask question to them whether they have been smoking or not so this is very uh, easily testable prediction so this is what the hypothesis is we must uh, we should know uh, this uh, through these uh, uh, definitions more uh, definition which is uh, given in merriam webster dictionary is uh, goes as a hypothesis is an assumption an idea that is proposed for the sake of argument so that it can be tested to see if it might be true another definition is given by american dictionary is that hypothesis is an idea or explanation for something that is based on known facts but has not yet been proven so researcher need to test it another definition is given by statistician sarenta cos uh, that i like more they says this goes like a tentative ex a hypothesis is a tentative explanation tentative explanation of a research problem a possible outcome of research or an educated guess about the research outcomes just pay attention on each and every term over here a tentative explanation of research problem so hypothesis tries to tentatively define or explain a research problem a possible outcome of research hypothesis you know uh, indicates about the possible outcomes of research or an educated guess about the research outcomes just pay attention on this word educated guess it's just, it's not a wild guess this is a guess which is well worked out before guessing a researcher works a lot in finding out you know some possibilities he or she looks into too much uh, literature review available deep, uh, peeps in deeper into the phenomena what is happening no it's not wild guess it's a guess based on some substantial knowledge and homework so that is how the definition of hypothesis goes <clears throat> now question arises what are various sources of hypothesis it's not hypothesis cannot be you know uh, formulated in vacuum there are some you know um, silos there are you know some sound regions there are some uh, proven facts based on that hypothesis can be formulated so hypothesis in fact is derived from the research problem from the literature review or from the conceptual framework or from all of these so if i just throw some light on each and every source of hypothesis first one mentioned over here is observation researcher can observe something happening out there then um, raises question in his or her mind then um, after little way, uh, after substantial uh, uh, homework or, or work on uh, that problem he or she comes to uh, certain you know questions and, and hypothesis this may be intuition just as you know einstein was was lying down um, um, and and uh, thinking about you know um, uh something uh, but suddenly uh, uh, at the tree under which he was lying down um, an apple falls down an apple fell down and then he thought why didn't this apple go up 
why had this apple come down so finally this uh, this uh, was a problem to einstein and further what happened result is you know evident to each and every one of us so that is what the intuition we suddenly see some phenomena and ask some question in mind and 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 that's how you know so many uh, researchers so many you know um, literary figures uh, so many uh, fiction writers work so intuition is you know one of the biggest sources of you know uh, hypothesis culture may be another source of hypothesis when some culture changes when we go to some other states or some other societies and see something happening out there then we can develop some hypothesis related to any problem which we perceive out there theory may be another uh, source of you know uh, hypothesis what researchers do they they study theory and they they raise some questions in their mind and then they further tries to explore uh, things or and phenomena so theory is one of the source other studies and other researches uh, which needs to be continued uh, are also sources of you know hypothesis as as we all know that no research is complete in itself research is just a part of just a link of a long chain which has no end so there you know links needs to be added 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 and that will keep on adding uh, in times to come and nobody can say that finally this research has come to an end it it is an ongoing process like when when a uh, bulb was uh, invented by thomas alva edison and uh, Uh, that bulb is not uh, prevalent today whatever you know lighting um, equipments or gadgets we have whatever form of bulbs and uh, lighting sources we have now they are entirely different from those which thomas alva edison had invented so this is you know the result of ongoing process ongoing advancement ongoing ongoing process of research so that's how you know research is an ongoing process this is never ending so a continuation of research is another source of hypothesis now uh, let's understand what types of hypothesis are there are several types of hypothesis let's take these hypothesis one by one simple hypothesis complex hypothesis so what is simple hypothesis what is complex hypothesis we will be learning in forthcoming slides directional hypothesis non directional hypothesis statistical hypothesis uh, null hypothesis alternative hypothesis then logical hypothesis empirical hypothesis let's take these hypothesis one by one so let's discuss simple versus complex hypothesis in this slide simple hypothesis shows a relationship between one independent variable and only one dependent variable just uh, for an example smoking causes cancer smoking is independent variable whereas cancer is dependent variable so when this hypothesis is formulated this hypothesis can be called simple hypothesis against it there is complex hypothesis which shows that it shows the relationship between two or more dependent variables and two or more independent variables for example smoking and drinking lead cancer hypertension etc smoking and drinking two are independent variable whereas cancer hypertension etc are independent uh, sorry dependent variable and smoking and drinking are independent <coughs> sorry so uh, when uh, we formulate this hypothesis this hypothesis will be called complex hypothesis another uh, form of hypothesis is known as directional uh, hypothesis against that is non directional hypothesis let's understand what directional hypothesis is this actually specifies the direction of the relationship between independent 
and dependent variable. For example, high quality of medical education will lead to high quality of medical practices. So this shows what kind of relationship between medical education and uh, quality of medical practices skills is. That shows a direction. Like if, if uh, uh, medical education quality increases, then what will happen? Medical practice skills will also increase. So this, this, this shows us a positive relationship between dependent and independent variable. So that's how this hypothesis is called directional hypothesis. Against it is non-directional hypothesis, which specifies the relationship between independent and dependent variable, but not the direction. For example, quality of medical education and the skills of medical practices are related. It shows that they are related, but they do, it doesn't show that how they are related, positively or negatively. This hypothesis doesn't talk of uh, uh, the nature of relationship. It talks of the relationship, but not the direction of the relationship. Another example we can see here, a student's hard work and his performance in exams are related. Again, it's also not, not showing any direction in this. Teacher-student relationship influences the student's learning, but it doesn't talk about how does it influence positively or negatively. So that's what uh, directional and non-directional hypothesis is. Now let's take statistical hypothesis. In fact, the statistical hypothesis is a hypothesis or an assumption about a population parameter and which is you know subject to be tested statistically. That's why its name is a statistical hypothesis. There are two types of statistical hypothesis or the two types of you know, assumptions which can be tested statistically or by using statistical tools. They are none other than the most popular null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Let's uh, discuss one by one what is null hypothesis. Null hypothesis is denoted by H0. Many a time students ask, sir, why null? What does, what does null means? Null actually stands for nullifiable word. Nullifiable means rejectable. So null hypothesis means a hypothesis which is made to reject, made for rejection. A researcher always try to reject the hypothesis. So hypothesis is, is uh, formulated the way it can be rejected. So there is uh, 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 hypothesis called null hypothesis which is made for rejection and uh, when we try to find out relationship between the two in fact we know that there is a relationship between the two uh, roughly with the help of observations or with the help of literature review and we try to test it so we always formulate negative hypothesis so that we can test it and further, we can accept opposite of that. So the null hypothesis is, you know, uh, uh, often made like there is no relationship between the two variables. Whereas researcher um, understands based on the available, available evidences that there is relationship, but he wants to test it. So he formulates the null hypothesis like there is no relationship between the two variables. This is why because researcher wishes to reject the hypothesis. So example is there is no relationship between sugar consumption and diabetes. Whereas researcher knows that there is relationship. Researcher knows based on the observations, based on uh, the literature review. But he wants to test it, then only he wants to accept it. So that's why for testing purpose, he formulate null hypothesis that is negative, that negates the relationship between sugar consumption and diabetes, so that after testing, researcher can reject it 
and then accept the opposite of it which is known as alternative hypothesis uh, uh, that is how he makes this null hypothesis opposite let's take a wonderful example over here Parsing a statistician's response to a marriage proposal, actually a statistician and um, and some some uh, a girl, both are both are you know students of statistics. So the boy you know proposes girl for the marriage, but girl says, I fail to reject the null hypothesis. I fail to reject means I accept. Null hypothesis means there is no change in her status. Since beginnings, he was um, thinking that she will not be marrying you. The boy was again, again, and again trying. So null hypothesis was no relationship between boy and girl, between this boy, this girl and boy. That was, you know, the assumption. That was the thinking of the girl since beginning. So the girl again sticks to her null hypothesis. Then uh, how how uh, that boy interprets uh, girl's statement uh, uh, and how he you know um, translates it. He says, "Oh no, that means no." He understands that girls rejected his proposal. So, as, as the girl's null hypothesis was negated and she failed to reject that hypothesis, that means she accepted that null hypothesis. Still, she accepted that null hypothesis. Now, uh, let's take another example how null hypothesis can be formulated. There is a research question, there is a uh, problem, there is a research question that can flexible work arrangements improve job satisfaction? So the hypothesis is employees, the basis of hypothesis you can see here, employees who have flexible working hours will report greater job satisfaction than employees who work for fixed hours. Based on this you know, uh, knowledge, the null hypothesis formulated as there is no relationship between working hour flexibility and job satisfaction. This null hypothesis researcher will test and finally opposite of that which is known as alternative hypothesis he will be accepting at the end or he may be accepting at the end. So null hypothesis denoted by H1 or HA, which is also called as research hypothesis, which is as I have told you earlier as well, which is opposite to null hypothesis. So while we are formulating null hypothesis, we formulate uh, one more hypothesis, which is uh, called alternative hypothesis, which is in fact opposite of null hypothesis and which is formed because in case null hypothesis is, is, is rejected, this alternative hypothesis will be ready to be accepted. So the researcher reaches an uh, uh, alternative hypothesis only when null hypothesis is rejected. So in fact, that's how we can say alternative hypothesis is actually a desired conclusion of the researcher. Let's take another uh, very interesting example of hypo null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis here. Uh, uh, this is a very milestone, you know, research of, uh, of the world, which which changed um, everything in the in the in the world. In fact, this is about the uh, Earth. Before Copernicus, uh, world was thinking that Earth is flat. But several scientists, uh, including Copernicus, set out to uh, disapprove the hypo null hypothesis, which was the, that the world is flat. This was accepted till then. So for Copernicus and his team, this was a kind of null hypothesis because 
Copernicus and his team actually for the first time tried to reject this null hypothesis. So his null hypothesis was the world is flat. So his alternate alternative hypothesis was the world is round or the earth is round. Word means earth here. So this eventually led to the rejection of the null hypothesis and the acceptance of alternative hypothesis. Most people accepted it. But the ones who did not uh, you know, accepted it created uh, uh, a society named uh, the, the Flat Earth Society. But anyways, what would have happened if Copernicus hadn't disapproved it and merely proved the alternative hypothesis? Nobody would have known to him. And no one of us would have come to the fact that Earth is round. At his time, this was really a very, very daring question, which he questioned. And finally, which uh, he tested uh, and, and, and established something which is correct now. Since then, we have been uh, knowing that Earth is not flat. In fact, this is. So if Copernicus hadn't been successful, nobody would have been listened to him, nobody would have been knowing him, and nobody would have been knowing the truth. So in order to change people's thinking, he first had to prove that their thinking was wrong, and he questioned himself, and he tested that question, and finally proved before the world that what they have been thinking for long was wrong and what he is saying now is correct. Similar is the you know, research uh, in, uh, uh, about, about sun and earth. Galileo for the first time questioned the well-established thought that sun revolves around the earth. And he made this null hypothesis because he wanted it to reject. He made his null hypothesis, sun revolves, the, uh, revolves around the earth. And his alternative hypothesis was, sun doesn't revolve around the earth, or opposite of that, earth revolves around the sun. Eventually, he uh, rejected the null hypothesis, and he proved that his alternative hypothesis uh, is acceptable and which was it is the earth which revolves around the sun now uh, uh, let's understand the mathematical expression of null and alternative hypothesis this is also known as a statistical expression suppose there is a coin uh, which we have tossed and um, uh, we are trying to find out whether the coin is fair or not so the null hypothesis is that um, half of the flips would result in heads and half would result in tails. So the alternative hypothesis is the, that this is not true. That means number of heads and number of tails would not be same. So um, symbolically in this uh, null and alternative hypothesis are uh, expressed here. Null hypothesis H naught colon P equal to 0.5. This is probability uh, of heads and tens, uh, tails being equal. So if toss is coined, head and tail, uh, possibility or probability for both head and tail um, is equal, that is 0.5 or 50%. Whereas alternative hypothesis is opposite of that which shows that this is not equal, this is unequal. So that's how, you know, uh, alternative hypothesis is ex expressed like HA colon P is not equal to 0.5. So this is how uh, 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 logical statistics um, can be, you know, uh, presented in the form of statistical hypothesis, that is null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Now, what is logical hypothesis? 
it is a proposed explanation possessing limited evidences so until and unless there are uh, adequate evidences for formulating a hypothesis it is it can be called a logical hypothesis when lipo the logical hypothesis is uh, substantiated with the empirical evidences this becomes empirical hypothesis or working hypothesis this comes to life when a theory is being put to the test using observations and experiment when we substantiate the logical hypothesis with evidences theories and testings it becomes you know empirical hypothesis it's no longer just an idea or notion we can say it's actually going through some trial and error and perhaps changing around those independent variables and testing the effect of the um, change on to the dependent variable <clears throat> now uh, let's understand what are the characteristics of a hypothesis or a good hypothesis a good hypothesis should be simple and clear it should be stated simply in simple words and it should be clearly stated just as um uh, hard work of a student uh, results in uh, better performance in examinations like smoking causes cancer like out of pocket healthcare expenditure causes adversely on the economic status of a family very simple really very clear and here the variables are measurable smoking causes cancer dependent variable uh you know uh, where uh, cancer uh, independent variable is you know smoking we can simply you know find out a, a sample of uh, cancer patients and question them uh, about their history of smoking them or not so we can just catch uh, sample uh, elements we can measure these variables and we can finally you know put the data into the test and um, uh, reach the results so it is testable it is specific and relevant irrelevant hypothesis uh, leads research nowhere until and unless research hypothesis is specific to the point to, uh, and and relevant to the research then only research is meaningful otherwise research will reach nowhere it should have objectivity if there is no objectivity in hypothesis then the entire research will become futile researcher will have no objective of doing uh, research it should have objectivity clearly stated indicating towards the objectivity of the research in fact objectivity of hypothesis is objectivity of research is object objectivity of researcher and above all it should be manageable we can formulate very catchy very beautiful hypothesis like uh, universe is limited but to us it's not manageable like hypothesis is uh, uh, global warming has no impact on uh, glaciers very stunning very surprising to all i mean but it's not manageable to me then it's futile exercise for me i am not expert of you know uh, measuring uh, or testing this hypothesis which is based on the glaciers i am not you know expert in that i have no resources i am not trained for that so how can i manage this it is something such big which is not manageable to me i cannot test it i would be you know uh, studying um, the subjects which are manageable by me so my research hypothesis would be would be manageable by me and lastly uh, uh, we are going to study importance of uh, importance of hypothesis this is in fact very important as uh, uh, as in the outset of this lecture uh, i said that this is the beginning of research this is the starting of research or any scientific investigation so this is very important in one sentence i could say however here 
let we uh, let us uh, see the importance of hypothesis in some bullet points <clears throat> like it provides direction to research i talked about it keeps focus of the researcher yes researcher would be focused if you, his research is uh, having objectivity if his research hypothesis is uh, having objectivity so it helps in devising research techniques once research hypothesis is accurate the data will be collected very right so the research uh, analysis tools and techniques would rightly be identified and implemented it ensures accuracy and precision obviously if hypothesis is uh, defined precisely correctly you know specifically uh, with objectivity then um, uh, accuracy and precision of sample statistics tests will definitely be there so the results would definitely be better and you know um, the whole process would scientifically be completed and lastly it saves resources as i have told you earlier resources are always limited so a good hypothesis uh, you know can save resources such as time energy money etc thank you that's all for today thank you